Hi, everyone. Welcome to Chatting the Pictures. I'm Kara Finnegan. I'm a writer, teacher, and historian of photography. And I'm Michael Shaw, the publisher of Reading the Pictures. So we're back for more photo time, Michael. Yep, uh, we sort of took a break that just kept breaking, so <laughs> we're back. <laughs> Meanwhile, um, I guess one could say things happened as they usually do, yes. A lot's happened, but in some ways the the, the intensity of the, the visual intensity, I think, has actually slowed down a little bit. But who knows? I mean, that's a little bit. I think that's what gives us a little bit of a respite. Yeah, and I think we have a, a good group of photos to to uh, talk through today and to uh, get us and our audience uh, back on the wagon, as it were. So yeah. why don't we start? Um, as folks may know, uh, we have three segments in each episode of Chatting the Pictures. And our first segment, we always call the news. And there we ask uh, the question, how do news photos tell a story? So this um, photograph uh, uh, is actually a, a few weeks old. It was taken October 6th, um, the day that um, Brett Kavanaugh was uh, confirmed to the uh, Supreme Court. And um, the title uh, it says, Demonstrators Pound on the Front Door of the U.S. Supreme Court after Kavanaugh is confirmed by the Senate. And it was taken by uh, Andrew Herrer from uh, Bloom Bloomberg Photos. Um, and one reason that we chose it and uh, we feel like it's still relevant is that uh, it represents uh, a political a talking point that's really at issue right now where the Republicans have been talking frequently and as uh, recently as night before last during the Texas um, Senate debate uh, about the mob. So this uh, has come to represent, and, and they often, when they talk about the, the, the liberal or the democratic mob, they talk about protesters having been pounding on the doors of the um, Supreme Court uh, during the uh, Kavanaugh or after the Kavanaugh confirmation. This photo is really interesting in a number of ways. And I think obviously my eye, probably many other people's eyes, uh, my eyes drawn immediately to the hands. And to me, what's interesting is you've got the closed fist, right, of the banging on the door. Um, and then I really keep getting hung up visually on the lower left which is the hand that's just reaching out and touching uh, the door in a, in a, in a gesture that is, um, I don't know how to describe that gesture. Is it, it, it does not appear to be somebody trying to uh, like a mob would attack and bang down the doors and, you know, um, uh, trample the patriarchy or whatever. It's, it's a hand that's almost kind of just reaching out in a gesture um, maybe of, of, um, kind of blessing or yeah, it's like uh, penitent. Or, yeah, or just kind of, um, you know, trying to, I don't know, touch the walls of justice. That sounds a little overblown right. to put it that way. But so that juxtaposition between the banging and that hand gesture to me, um, I don't know, it's just really compelling. And like I said, that hand on the lower left, the composition of the photo just really drags your eye right down there, doesn't it? Yeah, it's really interesting, that contrast between those two types of gestures, actually, because um, the picture itself uh, and the allusion to the mob um, makes uh, the, the scene and what happened that day more of a, a, a political Rorschach at this point. So the fact that you have the split there between um, gestures that um, connote like a different tone uh, or mood and, and a different um, treatment of the institution um, is pretty interesting too. Yeah, yeah, and and again, I, I mean, the door, you know, those doors just so visually represent the power of institutions, right? So, um, you know, one of the other parts that's really interesting to me is that the photographer puts us on, essentially on the protester side, the side of the quote unquote mob, uh, in terms of where we are positioned as a viewer. And so we are kind of down there with the mob and then the two male figures, right? Um, about as patriarchal as you can look uh, in, uh, in the carvings on the door are completely ignoring. Uh, yeah. the viewer, they're completely ignoring 
uh, the group, uh, not entirely of, uh, of women, it appears, but the group of mostly women. And so to me, that's really interesting. The, the male figures are looking at each other and uh, nobody is paying any attention to the mob. So on the one hand, the mob in that characterization that people have made is supposed to be threatening. But, you know, to me, the photo also, to a certain extent, says, yeah, we're really kind of just ignoring you. Um, one thing I'd, uh, about the photo, too, is that they're not all women. It's very easy to um, to just see it that way quickly. But that is a male uh, mm -hmm. yeah. whose hands are like, you know, at the highest point uh, in, in yeah. terms of the relief. The other thing is, because I'm so much of a wonk, uh, I had written on Twitter how much this the, uh, the women, mostly women, are, you know, there's a counterpoint between them and the these two male figures that like with the scroll and the scepter. Well, I went back and looked up the, the door and the art. And the, um, the doors, by the way, are, are 19 tons uh, or 13 tons and they're 17 feet high. And, they're, and what's strange about the photo too is that they are bronze, but the photo's oh, a little wow. bit washed out. So it looks like they're wood. It does look like they're wood, yeah. So when you get a real picture of those doors, it looks, they really look like they're golden. So the fact that yeah. they're quote unquote tarnished in the image, you know, it's maybe like a, a metaphor. And then that little, so that scene, there's like, I think 12 different scenes of um, legal uh, history, highlights of legal history. And this uh, one scene is from the um, Statute of Westminster. So it's, it was a scene from 1275. And it basically represents, um, that's King Edward the first on the, on the left there. And it represents the British dominions being um, freed from the monarchy. So, I don't know the fact that you know the, the that the rest of the you know that the, the 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 empire gets freed, you know, also speaks to liberation and freedom. So I thought that was a nice twist, also. Yeah, that's really interesting. You know, I love that background stuff. Um, and, <laughs> I and again, the, <laughs> then the scroll, uh, you know, and and just yeah, that that kind of irony of justice, like justice, who's justice, right? Yeah. Yeah, and there's something else also about the fact that this, that the photo is square, that I think just um, uh, kind of further amplifies all of the things we've been talking about. The the line, kind of the linearity of you know the hand from the left up to the kind of male figures on the on the door, um, you know things that are square are supposed to be rational and fair, and you know being on the square and all of that, and so that. Um, to me also, I think just amplifies a lot of what we've been saying. Yeah, Instagram uh, will do that. Yeah, so uh, Instagram uh, for the win, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we move on? Sure, of course. So our segment called The Look uh, is interested in asking the question of how are uh, photojournalism images pushing the visual boundaries in ways that illuminate a story or an idea? And here is this week's photo. Ah, so this photo again is not brand new. Uh, I actually don't have a date on it, unfortunately. It was taken by um, Noah Berger uh, for the Associated Press, and um, but it was uh, and it's been it, and it it documents the um, wildfires in um, the Shasta Trinity National Forest in California, uh, which I think was taken last month. But the most recent version of the photograph, it appeared in um, that really scary um, New York Times article, uh, I think it was last week, talking about the, um, the IPCC um, report on climate change. International Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which is basically the, uh, a research arm for the United Nations um, to uh, basically track climate change. And this is the report was saying that that the calamity or hellfire of climate change is going to hit us a lot sooner than we thought as early as 20, 2040, where we're going to see a significant impact. So um, this picture has been published over and over and over again. And uh, I'll let you start off in terms of why you think it has been. You know, one of the questions um, that in my years of teaching visual politics and analyzing images that I've 
asked students is, how do you depict certain abstract ideas visually? And one of the examples I've always given is climate change, uh, because you can't see climate change, but you can see the evidence of climate change. And so how might a photographer in a specific still image try to offer evidence of climate change? And uh, this photo, uh, to me, does it in obviously a very visually dramatic way. Uh, as you said, it, it, it it, it is an image uh, of hellfire, the orange, the red, the fire, the sparks, all of that. But to me, the key way that this photo works is in terms of the way it tries to say, hey, here's a picture of climate change, is it's the contrast between that really dramatic, dangerous environment and the lone human figure uh -huh. with a hose that seems totally insufficient uh -huh. to the task, right? So uh -huh. the photo to me works both in an individual context of like, oh my gosh, look at what this guy is up yeah. against, or these people fighting this fire, this particular place. But there's also a broader way to read it and and to and to say, okay, if this guy, I, I, I believe that's the gender of the firefighter, I shouldn't assume, but if this firefighter with this hose, if we think of that person as a representative of an institution, then how can human institutions battle what seems to be impossible? So to me, the photo really works on a couple of levels. Uh -huh. It's both really specific and also kind of marvelously generalized. That's that's a that's a really great point. The, the other thing, the thing that strikes me uh, about this is how much it's about one type of um, effect uh, uh, of climate change, which is fire. But at the same time, it seems to generalize to, you know, all the different calamities uh, in a very apocalyptic way. So I look at this and as fast as I see fire and these embers, I also start thinking about a volcano. And then I start thinking about nuclear winter. It's got, again, it's like, so it, it generalized to apocalypse so fast. And I think that makes it, I think that's why it's been so widely published and it's so unique because it just, it kind of gets at, at all of it as best you can. The other thing that's amazing to me about this photograph is that, you know, back in the day when uh, photographers were shooting film, you know, you would see like either burns or scratches that we could get on the media. And oh, yeah. what's astonishing about this, if you just look right there in the bottom and in a, a couple other places, it looks like the, um, image has been singed or 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 scratched by you know one of these embers. Of course, what we're looking at is an ember. But the fact that you would imagine that the media would be scratched when we're looking at is digital. Also, like talks about how climate change is so unfathomable and it's so and, it, and it's so and it's so absolute. Here, it's like it actually can damage the media when the media is digital. That's really interesting. It gives it um, almost a, a kind of material quality, right? That that makes it almost tactile, in a way. Yeah, that's really that's a really interesting. Reason. I think it's um, chilling every time I look at that quote unquote scratch. <laughs> and it's yeah, not. yeah, and then that really I think kind of underscores that notion of vulnerability, too. That not only is this a picture of. Uh, you know, these embers, um, each of which could become its own fire, which is incredibly frightening if you think about it. But also, yeah, that sense of, um, of vulnerability, uh, you know, kind of coming right at you in the foreground. As yeah, well, th this is going to get torched and this is going to get torched. Yeah. And, and that's, <laughs> yeah. you know, and there it's basically yeah. previewing that. Yeah, yeah. I always wonder with question uh, with images like this, too, you know, People talk about this notion of the sublime, something that's both beautiful and terrible. And uh -huh. a lot of environmental photography traffics in notions of the sublime. And um, sometimes that is a little overdone. But this image to me is a context in which it works because what it really is doing, it's not overblowing anything. It is it is literally illustrating the terrible, beautiful drama. I mean, it really is the sublime in a way that I think to photograph the scene in another way might actually do a disservice to um, the event and, you know, that whole question of climate change in general. Totally. Shall we yeah. move on to our uh, 
last but not least. <laughs> Certainly not least. <laughs> <laughs> so with the pick, we ask uh, the question, what photos get public traction and why? So here's this week's image. Yeah, uh, talk about a uh, unfolding story. Um, it, this, uh, the caption reads in this March 7th, 2018 file photo, Saudi Arabian Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, or as he's popularly referred to as MBS, arrives to meet Prime Minister Theresa May outside 10 Downing Street in London. Uh, and it says in 2017, at the age of 31, Mohammed became the kingdom's crown prince, next line to the throne, now held by his octogenarian uh, father, King Solomon. The photo was taken by Alistair Grant um, for the Associated Press. Um, I mean, it, talk about a photo that's about, that's just, you know, it, a, a stir uh, about a whirlwind, about something that's just so kinesthetic, you know, just that, and this guy who no one knew very well, and now we're getting to know, you know, well, and he's, this, 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 the potential, or the alleged murder of um, Jamal uh, Khashoggi in um, Istanbul really is going to, you know, proves that we don't know what's going on behind those robes. Yeah, this is such a great example of how a news photo, which had, you know, this image had particular meaning at the time, but much more innocuous uh, seeming, uh, I would imagine most people would agree than it, than it is when you look at it today. So that sense of, you know, the, the kind of joke of context is everything um, really does, does <laughs> play in here. Yeah. And, you know, and I mean, the, you know, the robe has all the all of these connotations, right? Like you said, the whirlwind, um, sweeping things under the rug, covering up, uh, you know, um, uh, all of those things are at play here. But to me, one of the things that I really focus on is uh, kind of the, I guess what I would call his offstage glance. Uh, you know, he is looking off to the right, mm -hmm. you know, whatever he's looking at in, in the context of when the photo was taken. Um, we don't really have a way of knowing, but, but that sense that there's just been so much confusion and, you know, uh, lack of clarity um, surrounding this incident just really kind of amplifies that. Like, who is this person? How is he related? How is he uh, colluding with others? Um, will we ever know? he doesn't seem very forthcoming in this image, you know, that kind of sideways glance. It's like, well, you know, you don't know uh, what I'm up to. Uh, to me, you know, it makes this image, um, and it's also relatively contextless. I mean, apart from the car, you don't, he could be, he could be anywhere. Uh, he could be doing anything. And so uh, the photo in some ways invites readings that are about today rather than about whatever they were about in March. Well, actually that's really interesting because the fact that he could be anywhere, so we've got this sort of um, sliver of 10 Downing Street that uh, maybe people in England would recognize, but I sure don't. It, yeah, it's it a brick also, wall, basically. It, yeah, it's also really interesting because, you know, this guy was on this international charm offensive. He went to uh, the United States. He went to 10 Downing Street. He went. He was at the White House. He went to Silicon Valley. He, you know, he's just been trying to, you know, take over in terms of really getting, putting himself at the center of this like cultural, political, you know, um, uh, uh, international um, nexus. And uh, the fact that this is 10 Downing Street, but it could be like some, you know, like some corner in an alley speaks so perfectly too to how nefarious uh, this whole situation is with Khashoggi and how, you know, this guy is really, at, at least at this point, you know, like not making much of a comeback in terms of just representing himself as, you know, as just the number one, you know, thug in the, in the, in, in the, in the world. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a really, that's really interesting in that sense too, that, you know, he's very sharply in focus here, but what's behind him is also a little fuzzy and, you know, that further that sense of this could be anything, this could be anywhere. Um, and uh, again, I think combined with that kind of sideways glance, 
uh, you know, this is an image that, you know, it's the pick for us, I think, because it has a particular kind of public, um, it offers a particular kind of public traction on, uh, an, on an event uh, that is very unclear and largely invisible in terms of its availability to the public. Yeah, I mean, he's really wrestling with these garments and, you know, the, 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 it, I think when you wear these garments, these types of garments too, and you're that, uh, and you're operating at that high a, a social station, you know, you're very deliberate in how you actually, uh, you know, move this garment around or touch touch yourself the way someone would touch the, you know, buttons on a suit. And that and that that right hand seems to be so dignified, uh, but that left hand looks like, you know, we've just I got to keep this thing on or I'm going to lose it. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you, yeah, and, yeah. and you have that incredible sheer in like our perception of Saudi Arabia and and the prince and the uh, administration's relationship to Saudi Arabia, you know, right now. And so, you know, he's it, trying to keep it together, but it's just like the forces of nature are not cooperating. Yeah, I think that's a really that, that juxtaposition of the hands is really interesting. Um, uh, and it makes me think of the hands in the in the first image that we talked about as well. That uh, one hand is doing something, and other hands are doing other yeah. things, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. What, is, what is the phrase? The left hand doesn't know what the right hand is up to, or something <laughs> like that. Yeah. Yeah, and I do like the hood ornament too, which you know is just a little touch of you know the whole you know uh, all of that um, largesse and 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 wealth. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Exactly. And um uh just to be clear kind of what level we're all working at here yeah. yeah yeah so that would be our week yep um uh good images interesting images um anything else you want to say as we wrap up here michael no i think i'm we're pretty good i think maybe next week we might take um uh, a look at more images from uh hurricane michael perhaps um and uh, I'm sure we'll be seeing more from Saudi Arabia uh, as it, or about the, this um, affair as it, as it moves forward. But I, I have no doubt we'll have plenty to look at next week. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, Michael, do you want to give people a quick reminder of where and how to find us? Reading the pics on Twitter, uh, reading the pictures uh, on uh, Facebook, reading the pictures on Instagram. And we've been posting these replays on our website, uh, readingthepictures.org. All right. Thanks, everyone. And uh, we hope to see you next time. Thanks a lot.